Hi there, I'm Matt, Marketing Manager at Evil Empire, and I'm here to talk to you about our latest Dead Cells update, Breaking Barriers. This update is all about making Dead Cells more accessible to everyone. It's been five years since that early access release. Yep, you heard that right, five years. So we realised that it's long past time that we made sure that Dead Cells can be enjoyed by as many people as possible. We're trying to achieve this accessibility in two ways. One is a whole bunch of new options, mainly based around visual cues and mobility, such as outlining characters and objects in game, holding a button to repeat actions instead of requiring button mashing, or changing the font style and size. And when I say a whole bunch of options, I really mean it, there is an absolute ton of new customizability in the game. We're also introducing an assist mode, with sliders to adjust elements of the game, such as enemy damage or trap speed, as well as a toggle for auto hit and a multiple lives option. All of this is available in new sections of the options menu for easy access. There's no point making all this stuff and then tucking it away in a dead end section of the menu. So, before I go into each change, I'd like to briefly explain why we're doing this update. Dead Cells is intended to be tough but fair. Sure, you die a lot, but you grow your skill with each run, gaining new weapons and powers until you can beat the final boss. Then you add a boss cell to up the difficulty, die straight away to the weakest enemy in the game, but you keep on improving and moving forward. However, we realise that this tough but fair experience is just unattainable for some players, for a whole range of reasons. The new options that we're introducing here should allow these players to make specific, tailored adjustments to the game to remove the barriers preventing from having that experience, rather than introducing arbitrary difficulty options. We hope that these changes can let more players enjoy Dead Cells as we intended, and if the unaltered version of Dead Cells already hits the right balance of challenge and progression for you, then these changes are all optional. You can just leave the game as it is and continue having fun. So, let's run through the options we're introducing and why we're adding them. First up, we have a range of options to help players with mobility issues. These include holding the button to use your second jump, hold to roll, Customizable controls for actions that require a long press or a button plus joystick action, like the downward smash move. Plus, a toggle option for using the shield instead of requiring a long press. Here we're trying to help players who experience problems when either holding or rapidly pressing buttons, or using multiple inputs in a short period of time. You can also now remap buttons so players with limited hand mobility can adjust the controls to their individual needs. So far, pretty standard stuff. Next up are the options addressing visibility. Dead Cells is a fast-paced and frenetic game, and this can result in some sensory overload for some players, and for others it can become just impossible to distinguish the individual elements on screen. That's our bad for trying to throw everything in the kitchen sink at you in the name of frenetic combat, but we realise that for some people it can just be too much. To ease the overload, we've added a slider to adjust the particle cap. Reducing this will limit the particle effects that occur from events such as weapon effects, like uh, ice or fire, or enemies dying. And that happens pretty much every second, so it should be pretty noticeable uh, when you make the changes. This will decrease the mess on screen, particularly in those intense combat situations with multiple enemies, where a little mistake can cause a horrible chain reaction that results with you dead on the floor, again. A no blood mode also completely eliminates all blood effects to keep the action clean and readable if you need it. There are also options to add an outline around the beheaded, projectiles, enemies, active skills, NPCs and secrets to help players better distinguish what is happening on screen. You can even choose which colour you want the outlines to be if you need specific colours or if you just fancy a bit of funky dead cells. This also has the added bonus of adding a new art style to the game. There's a little hint of kind of borderlands in there somewhere. The interface is now adjustable in both size and transparency again on a slider to let players decide what works for them. Some might prefer a smaller UI to increase gameplay visibility, but others might need a more distinct UI as the icons are too small for them. We're leaving it up to you. There are now a ton of options around text and colour. We have multiple font styles to choose from, including pixelated and dyslexic friendly. Text size can be changed, and you could alter the font colour too, as well as the colour of the stats. By stats, I mean brutality, tactics and survival which will no longer be called red, purple and green anywhere in the game. That is because we are allowing players to choose the exact colour they want for each stat, with really, really fine customability. This will affect the colour of the text of the stat, 
the UI icons and the aura around items in-game. There was a lot of work that went into this part of the update. A coloured filter option between the background and foreground is now available too, with customization for colour and opacity, just like their text. This should help players to distinguish active elements of the game even further if they need to. The brutality, tactics and survival icons are available next to the numbers to the bottom left of the UI, and we're adding synergy icons in the equipment menu to improve visibility of effects and their synergies. Finally, for players with hearing issues, we're allowing the adjustment of each different sound effect separately. So, if for instance you have trouble hearing enemy sounds which telegraph their attacks, you can reduce the other sound effects while leaving the enemy sound volume higher. Or, just for people who have sensory overload, they can adjust specific parts of the sound to suit them as they want. I wish we could do this in real life, but you take what you get. On to assist mode now, which contains multiple different options. First up is the full map reveal, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It fully reveals the map of each biome from the beginning. There is also an auto hit option, which is actually already in the mobile version, but we're bringing it to PC and consoles to help players with mobility issues. This mode will automatically attack with a primary weapon, allowing players to just manage their secondary weapon and skills, reducing the need for rapid inputs. Next up is a set of sliders that allow adjustment of elements of the game. This is meant to allow specific adjustments of the game's challenge to make that tough but fair gameplay accessible, without changing everything else. For instance, the standard trap speed can require a series of rapid inputs to get through a challenge room successfully, which might not be doable for some players. But, if they find the rest of the gameplay balanced already, they can just change this specific part of the game and leave the rest as it is. The final part of assist mode is the multiple death option. This lets players resurrect at the start of the biome if they die, in the exact state that they started the biome in, and you can choose to revive yourself 1, 3, 7 or infinite times in a run. The idea behind this is to allow players who have involuntary movements or activity, such as muscle spasms, to have another chance if their run is ruined by something that is out of their control. We are fully aware that this can be considered controversial, as it alters part of the roguelike aspect of the game, where if you die, you, you die straight away. But we're putting this in specifically to let people enjoy the game who otherwise would be excluded from doing so. That's the full list of changes that we're introducing, and all of them were tested with a panel of players with various impairments at Able Gamers, as well as our usual testing with the Dead Cells Steam community. So thank you to everyone who took part, you're a massive help to us. We'd also like to say a final point on this update. We know that some of these changes are controversial for some people, especially the multiple deaths option, as you can perceive that we're altering the, the, the hardcore difficulty of the game. As we've hopefully just clearly explained, these options are designed specifically to let people enjoy the game who would otherwise be excluded from doing so. The base game is not being changed for anyone else. Anyone is free to play the exact same Dead Cells they were playing before this update. Basically, if we can add options to let more people have fun with Dead Cells, while not changing the experience for players who can already enjoy the game as it is, then we are going to add these additional options. If you're a Dead Cells player who doesn't need any of the content that we're introducing in this update, don't worry, we have plenty of shiny new things to introduce to Dead Cells later in the year. <laughs>